So why do we care about heart disease? Why does it matter what type of heart disease they have? Well, there are potentially life-threatening complications with heart disease. Um, probably the most important is congestive heart failure and uh, difficulties in filling the left ventricle can result in an increase in left atrial pressure and that can result in pulmonary edema and breathing difficulties. So depending on the type of cardiomyopathy, we can have different forms of ventricular dysfunction. So it may be diastolic problems where there's difficulty filling the left ventricle, or it may be systolic problems where the ventricle doesn't contract normally. Both of these can result in an increase in left atrial pressure. So if we have increased left atrial pressure, we'll have an increase in pulmonary capillary pressure, and this increase in hydrostatic forces can lead to fluid buildup in the interstitial space of the lungs, and we can get interstitial pulmonary edema. If the hydrostatic forces continue, and we continue to have an increase in fluid spilling out into the interstitial spaces of the lungs, eventually it can fill the alveolar spaces as well and we'll have alveolar pulmonary edema, which is certainly life-threatening. There are other longer-term effects that we also see from uh, cardiac problems. So anything that causes a reduction in cardiac output can result in arterial underfilling. That will reduce perfusion of the kidneys and that will be sensed by the bearer receptors and will trigger both sympathetic activation and also activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. These work together and they can contribute to an increase in systemic vascular resistance which can end up helping to maintain normal blood pressure. At the same time, activation of the renin-angiotensin system can also lead to an increase in sodium and water retention, an increase in plasma volume, and uh, this increase in preload can increase cardiac output again and restore blood pressure. But the same increases in plasma volume uh, can result in an increase in left atrial pressure, and this can lead to congestive heart failure also. So there's both short-term responses and long-term responses. Another major catastrophic sequel to cardiac disease in cats is aortic or arterial thromboembolism. And this is where a thrombus forms within the left atrium, uh, particularly in cats that have poor left atrial function. And this thrombus can then embolize into the systemic circulation blocking the blood supply, often to the hind limbs, but it can go anywhere in the body. And probably an underdocumented complication of heart disease in cats is sudden cardiac death. Um, this is usually believed to be associated with an arrhythmia, may also be associated with uh, arterial embolism, and uh, we probably don't know the true extent of sudden death in cats because many owners don't even tell their local veterinarian. So um, sudden death is common in people with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and we're just starting to realise how common it is in cats as well.